I will uh, request uh, Dr. Palkar, who is uh, uh, who is the uh, Deputy Executive Health Officer with the NCGM, to kick off the discussion. Uh, she has also done a lot of work with the NCGM Strategy and Diabetes Program, and I request you, ma'am, to start off with uh, awareness and education. May I just request uh, a mic for Dr. Palkar? This is a major uh, factor in diabetes, and uh, it's a because most of, as Daksha said, most of the patients are asymptomatic. And till they are uh, nothing happens to them, they don't go out and do anything. So right now we had a very uh, massive program on uh, awareness, wherein on World Diabetes Day, we had screened more than a, a lakh uh, Mumbaikers who have come forward and really uh, uh, helped in this drive by uh, this awareness that has been created. Uh, this awareness has also been uh, created in different uh, professionals. Professionals in the sense, not exactly professionals, but Daba Walas, Taxi Walas, who don't have the time to actually go in the daytime. So we've gone where they are uh, posted, and you know, like all the parking lots, where uh, airports, where you see a lot of these auto people and uh, people there. Even there are certain places where Daba Walas are also there. So for them, we had a special drive on Sunday. So these sort of uh, people, we have uh, approached them uh, to create awareness. Education also, we've been having a lot of posters and a lot of uh, camps. Even we had camps. In the monsoon camps also, as today even we had one camp today to, uh, for the, the birthday of Mr. Uddhav Thakre. There was a camp in uh, Parel. So there also, sir, um, uh, Mr. Deshmukh, additional municipal commissioner, had come there. And he said, the more than the malaria, now malaria, I think, has taken a back seat because we really controlled it. So now more than the malaria, there was a huge queue for the uh, blood testing for diabetes. So I think we are achieving what we are out to go. People who have no symptoms are also coming out for these camps, also the monsoon camps, to get their blood tested for diabetes. So this is what we've been doing. We've been uh, having newspaper advertisements so everyone knows where the diabetes dispensaries are also. Plus, we've also been having a lot of uh, posters and banners and uh, activities that are making people aware of diabetes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, I would now request uh, a doctor Vardhakavi, who is the head of department for endocrinology at uh, Nair Hospital, to uh, to share her views on screening and maximizing detection. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much for inviting me here today. Uh, now, when we talk in terms of screening for a disease, we have to take into consideration a few factors. Is this disease to be prevalent to a significant extent in our population? The answer is yes. Do I have markers? That means, do I have a particular number at which I can say you're a diabetic or not a diabetic? Yes, we have had associations lay down diagnostic criteria for pre-diabetes and for diabetes. Also, we have had uh, organizations laying down the high-risk population that need to be screened for diabetes. Is it worth it screening for diabetes? Can I do something after having screened for diabetes? Yes, I definitely have strategies in place wherein I can sort of minimize the risk of progression of pre-diabetes to diabetes, prevent the progression of diabetes to the complications of diabetes, and to educate a vulnerable population to say, change your lifestyle now, you might never become a diabetic in the future. The only question that we need to really ask is, we are a very high risk population. Asian Indians, even at low body mass analysis, with waist circumferences which are like on the lower side compared to the rest of the western population do manifest a great degree of insulin resistance. That's probably genetic and probably we are adding to a risk by sort of the lifestyles that we eat, that we lead, the stress, the lack of exercise, the food choices that we make. So we are a high risk population. The only question that we need to really answer is how far are we going to go into our screening program? We know that every person who approaches us in the hospital has a family member or two whom we can screen for diabetes. We see a pregnant woman who's obese or who has had bad obstetric history, we know we can screen her for diabetes. Are we going to extend the screening to the population, to the entire population? Our primary health center has given us our answer to this. Thank you for the thank you, Daksha, for those figures. If 10% of our population 
is going to be diagnosed diabetic. I think it's worth it considering a universal screening program and an education program for those family members of those who turn out to be diabetic. I think this is a question which I think all of us have to answer with the policy makers because each test is going to cost money. And is that money going to be available to all of us at every stage of health? Um, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, we'll move on to uh, diet and nutrition. And uh, do we have Ms. Nazdeen Hussain with us? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, from the Indian uh, Diet Dietetics Association, Ms. Nathi Hussain will now talk about diet and nutrition. Yeah. I just like to say we've taken a lot of leading steps, especially uh, we now every CMNE which ha happens, we try and have like a public forum of it. So we follow the scientific session with the session open to the people. We created a lot of IC, IC material and. Uh, at this point of time, we have a vision that every school must have a dietitian. So wherein we are kind of controlling uh, this at the grassroots level itself. We also, like last year we covered almost around 100 schools and uh, we are also making, empowering these schools to create their own health clubs and creating films around that. Um, also, uh, we proposed the corporate se sector and we are now um, kind of stressing on this thing of having a wellness uh, kind of a program for all the employees wherein this early detection and treatment of diabetes can be done on a regular basis. So corporate sector is one thing which we are definitely looking at. We also tie up with different movements and like Dr. Daksha said, I'd just like to say that uh, one of the movements which we are starting, and this is a larger program, is uh, with the MCGM, with ORF and uh, with the residents, it's called Equal Streets which we will be starting in September wherein we are trying to at least have some part of the road which is car free and we are trying to get more and more people involved as a part of physical activity and IDA for sure will be there with their dietitians and spreading more nutritional information first hand to the general people. So these are some of the initiatives which we are definitely taking. We also have the World Dietetics Day and the Nutrition Week wherein we try promote a whole lot of activities during the week. We involve students, academics uh, everywhere and try and uh, get this to the ground level to people who need, who need them the most. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, moving on, uh, I would request uh, Dr. Maulik, who is the Head of Department of Medicine at uh, Sion Hospital, to please give her views on diabetes workforce and services. Ma'am. Good afternoon and thank you for inviting me. I think Shaida alluded to the 2005 uh, deluge in Mumbai and it's from there where we woke up to this whole uh, monsoon illness. But unlike malaria which lives with you for a short period of time and may recur, diabetes is something that's going to live with you all your life. So diabetes has no boundaries, you diagnose it at a younger age, in women, in type 1 diabetes at an earlier age. Type 2 and anything. The other thing is diabetes as the age, uh, I mean the healthcare is improving, diabetes are living longer and they are going to have some complication or the other. So if you have to look at the workforce, which I think that's I alluded to, that we have so many things to be planned, we need to have a team effort. And I think in diabetes and in many other diseases, you need a team effort. I mean nothing succeeds unless there's a team. And if we are to prevent all our complications, of young ones and elderly ones. We need to have expertise at the to prevent or look at the eyes, look at the cardiac status, look at the kidney diseases, which is becoming a big problem. So we need a big, big man force. And if we are to put every diabetic one into a program, I think we've learned a lot of lessons from our HIV program. A workforce would be mandatory, you have to have drugs available, you have to have education, awareness. We need a lot of qualified nurses in this, we need a lot of qualified nutritionists. Uh, exercise programs I think are in place. So I think we have to look at a workforce that will take you through your life in the management of diabetes. I think we have to start at the primary care where they have to be trained from time to time that every diabetes has to be annually checked up for uh, many other things like your heart, your uh, eyes and so on. And then you also have secondary care that they can diagnose and maybe treat major complications. 
and really tertiary care where the expertise is required for major preventions like for diagnosis and prevention. So we need to look at everyone because a diabetic patient goes to a general practitioner, to a hospital based, many of them just come with a complication that they never knew that they were diabetic. So I think the application rates that we had are lower and that's something heartening. But we still have a lot of complications that occur. Many people just come and have a heart attack and never know that they were diabetic. So if you look at the scene, we need a big workforce to help us uh, educate, make people know that this is a disease, accept the disease if at all they suffer from it. We need a support from the family that's there and we also need to look up at the high risk group and diagnose them, detect them early and see how much we can take them to a normal life. So I think today diabetes should be taken as a chronic, manageable disease and we should be able to take them, I mean, they take complications and treat them at the earliest and take them to a healthy, fruitful life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Malik. Uh, this topic is particularly important, so we have requested one more speaker to throw some light on this uh, uh, before Dr. Chadha, uh, and that is uh, Ms. Uh, Cheryl Salas, who is a member of uh, the Association of Diabetic Educators. Ms. Salas, please. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much, Hilda and ORF, for inviting us over to deliberate on this very important topic. And uh, I'm going to talk about the role of a diabetes educator. And as we all know that the number of people with diabetes is very large, and we also have a very large number of people with pre-diabetes. And as Dr. Prema Vartakavi rightly mentioned that you know so many people do not know that they have diabetes. And in India, we face a big challenge because everything is out of pocket expense. So the patient has to pay for uh, even to the visit to the doctor right from his medication to and also rejected insurance. So if he's a diabetic and he declares it, then he does not get insurance. So there's a lot of out of pocket expense as a result of which compliance to monitoring and compliance to doctor visits is really low. And people land up with complications and you know it's very uh, serious because they think it's a very mild disease because nothing is happening to them and they feel that you know they're doing well is only when they see that you know they, they start experiencing problems is when they go to a doctor and then by then it's too late. So we have people landing up with creatinine levels of 2 and 3 and that's when they actually go to their diabetologist and by then it's too late and they have to then see a nephrologist and go on to dialysis. And the same thing that we see with other complications like limb amputations, blindness, etc. Therefore, I think a role of a diabetes educator becomes very important because she plays a role of a preventive diabetologist and a preventive cardiologist. And I think that is the need of the hour today. Because we have to somehow try and you know, at least stop people from getting diabetes because we're seeing this in a very early age, maybe because of the kind of lifestyle that we're seeing. We are talking about walking. I think there's a lot of focus on walking. But frankly speaking, if you look at the roads in Bombay, how many of us are really encouraged to walk? I mean, most often when we tell people, you know, start walking, they say, man, there's no, no place to walk. So I think that is something that we really need to do something about so that we can really go because gyms and everything is there, but then people really don't have the time to do it and then they have enough excuses to give us. And uh, so we are doing a fair bit in terms of trying to educate people. And I think the government has also done an initiative recently along with the Healthcare Sector Skill Council. They've launched a program which is a certified diabetes educator program which is open for people, uh, you know, for even graduates today because they want to create this data and it's under the STAR scheme. So, the, you know, the fees are 15,000 rupees and on completion of the course, the government gives back 10,000 rupees, which I think is a great step on behalf of the government to do this because we are really looking at the diabetes educators because the patient-doctor ratio is very, you know, there are a lot of patients, few doctors and the doctors are really not able to spend that kind of time, they, though they would love to do it. So there's a lot of counselling that is required and a lot of self-management that is required. So patients need to know that why is insulin important to them because barrier to insulin therapy is really large and a big problem in our country due to which people land up with complications. So I think we really have to look at uh, you know qualified diabetes educators and who can counsel patients and at least look at preventing diabetes and for people with diabetes preventing complications. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And uh, uh, I would now request uh, Dr. Manoj Chatter of Hinduja Hospital to speak on medical management and a patient-centric approach to care. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chatter. You've made the time to come here despite your schedule and like many others here, you know, who've uh, really went backwards to make it for this program once again. Dr. Chatter. Thanks, Gaurav. Uh, I think you've heard a lot about the seriousness in terms of numbers of diabetes. 
We've heard about that it's an asymptomatic disease. Now what I'm trying to get out is that there are a lot of medical therapies available for diabetes. But we need to remember, first is the diet, the second is the drill. You're talking about exercise and walking, and then is the drugs. There's no idea talking of expensive drugs, drugs which are not available, drugs which may have side effects, unless the patient gets into diet and drill. Yes, uh, we've got a whole lot of drugs available in the last 30 years since I've been in diabetes. Things have improved. Costs have also gone up then automatically. But the way I talk to my patients is that if we can treat well, get to A1C, that's the three month average down by even 1%. There is no idea talking about targets. We've done studies, targets given by various uh, associations are 6.5 and 7%. Good centers have their patients at about 8.59%. So let's not talk of what the world is talking. But it has been shown that if you get your patients down by 1% also, you reduce the risk of complication by 25-30%. So let's talk about that first. I normally tell my patients, okay, you can't get the best treatment, get some treatment. It's like my father used to say that if you don't ask for a rupee, you're not getting it, I'd be satisfied with 50 paisa. Because at least something is being done. The important part is to tell patients, you know, they are major stakeholder in this treatment. This is not like malaria or typhoid or tuberculosis where the doctor gives a prescription and the patient takes the prescription. They have to understand why. That's why again we come back to education, which is not as expensive as giving expensive drugs or the newer insulins. Uh, I really want to conclude with the what one of my best friends says that, you know, like if I ask my senior, they give you a technical definition of what is diabetes. That we're not getting. Like my friend says, diabetes is Die in beats. And that is what something we should try to prevent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tata.